Pac-Man. The 1980s maze action video game still remains one of the highest grossing and best selling games to this day. But I mean, it's not the most exciting game especially when you're controlling Pac-Man from above. So I'm going to remake Pac-Man but in 3D and in first person so you can see the world from this beautiful yellow bald creature's eyes. <laughs> So I opened up Unity and the first thing I needed was of course the flow. After making it the same color as in Pac-Man, I added this cube and made it blue. This very cube would go on to be manipulated thousands if not tens of times to make the walls for this game. Oh also, cue the epic music. Now this is the best I can do when it comes to 3D modeling. And the game still needed ghosts. And not just any ghosts, 3D ghosts. So I opened up Blender, pressed a few buttons, moved my mouse around a little, and then closed it. Because as a wise man once said, why make it when you can, um, steal it? I mean, download it for free. Then somehow, I just happened to find this free 3D model of all four of the Pac-Man ghosts. I mean, how convenient. <laughs> so I imported them onto the ground and can I just say... After doing some resizing, I have to say, these ghosts look pretty. <laughs> then I added Pac-Man, which is really just a yellow ball. But the user will never know because the game is in first person. After adding a player controller script to Pac-Man, I wrote some code to make the cursor locked and hidden in the game window so you can move it around and not have it, you know, go out of the game window. Now I needed Pac-Man to move in the direction the mouse is moved. So I wrote some code for that and now when we hit play, you can move around in game using the keyboard and the mouse like in any other first person game. By the way, if you are enjoying so far, please consider subscribing and turn on notifications because most of the planet isn't subscribed to me and this is a huge problem. <laughs> but seriously, please consider subscribing because it helps me out a ton. Anyway, in Pac-Man there are these um, balls that Pac-Man eats to get points. So I added the same colored balls to my map, which looking back took way too long for me to do, but the map does look way better now. Then I made it so that every time Pac-Man eats, or in this case, bumps into one of these balls, you get a point. Now that Pac-Man can get points and win the game, we need a way for it to die and lose the game. Now I have already added ghosts, but they can't move yet. Because I'm too lazy to write a script to make them follow Pac-Man, so I did the next best thing. So after shamelessly stealing someone else's code, I definitely understood what it did. I mean, I totally know what per se, per, per se guacio means and of course I know what proximo means. I mean, everyone knows that. Then I added the one thing every first person game needs. A mini map. So I added a new camera, positioned it above the map, then made it orthographic so it looks 2D. Now in Pac-Man, there are these two portals on the sides that are sort of interconnected. So I added these two white doors, where if you pass through one, you teleport to the other. And well, I guess it works. But the in-game graphics don't look that great. But it's nothing a little post-processing can't fix. So I added just a little bit of bloom. Okay, maybe I'll leave out the bloom. <laughs> then I added a game over screen that will show if one of the ghosts catches Pac-Man. And I made this U1 screen that will show up if you eat all the balls in game. Then I built the game and gave it this beautiful app icon. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 